Another day on the job for Hershey, the hearing guide dog. Jim Hoy can't hear his own alarm clock, but his dog, part chocolate lab, part border collie, can. Come on, Hershey. Come on. That's a good doggy. To Jim Hoy, who's been hearing impaired since a childhood accident, Hershey's pretty close to being his salvation. Okay, set. Wait. Okay, let's go. I can hear with the help of these glasses. The arms have bone conductors which channel sound directly to Jim Hoy's inner ear canal. But they're so heavy, Hoy can't wear them all the time. But the dog is more than just Jim's ears. He's also given this widower renewed purpose. Before Hershey came into Jim's life, someone else was his constant companion his beloved wife of 40 years, Margaret. She too had entered Hoy's life just when he thought it was simply unbearable. When you were a little boy and you had trouble hearing, what was that like? Terrible. And when I went into a school, I was a freak. I didn't hear good and I looked ugly, you know. So that resulted in bullying and a lot of people think of bullying as big boy hits young boy, but they don't realize the taunting, the laughing, and the fear factor. You get so scared that you take the long way around to school, mm. or if you happen to be on the same road, you wish a hole would open up that you could jump into because the fear is terrible. Your father passed away from pneumonia. That must have been a shock. Quick. Yeah. He went to the hospital, I thought. He would be brought back again, you know. Oh. He never came by. And then my mother passed away with a heart attack in she front of me. In front of you? She was sitting in the Chesterfield and she uh, told me to go and get the neighbor. And when I came back in with a neighbor, she slid down off the Chesterfield, and that was all over. Jim, at that point in your life, what good do you see in life? You know, there was a boxer called Graziano, and he said, when he won the World Championship, somebody up there likes me, I reversed that. Mm. I, I had it figured out that somebody up there didn't like me. And Around that time, I met someone, her name is Margaret, who was to become my wife and best friend for over 40 years. Do you remember the first time you met Margaret? Yeah, and I thought she was a nuisance mm. because she had an older sister that I seemed to be getting on better with because mm. Margaret was younger. but. Uh, we really came together when she came over to Canada. So how old was she when she first came to Canada? 24. So you took this annoying young woman <laughs> under your arm? Yeah, when she was annoying, she was only 14. She say. wasn't so annoying at 24? That's <laughs> right. She sort of became quite a pretty yeah, young woman. she was. <laughs> she was a good singer. She was a terrific roller skater, a good dancer, had a good personality, you know? Why do you think you and Margaret had such a long and wonderful marriage. What made it work? We made a couple of roles, like uh, never go to bed angry. And, um, you know, if something was annoying, come right out with it. Be up front. That was the main thing. And the other thing was that we went everywhere together. Mm. How did Margaret react to your, to your hearing difficulties? She accepted it, you know, and she, when we would go to a restaurant, if I s spoke to her, and I'm t I tend to do that, she would just do that, 
with that hat. Little you know, tap. I hope it'd be me doing. She'd just do it just so, you know. And I would lower my voice, you know. And there's little things that you come up with, you know. To Dignity. Yeah. How long had you been married when Margaret was diagnosed with breast cancer? Forty years. Forty years. And the doctor said it was breast cancer. We thought, okay, the success rate was 78% at that time. But just as we were leaving the, the office, he said, I'm obligated to tell you that it's inflammatory and the success rate is less than 30%. So what that really does. And when we come home, she stood in front of the mirror and said, Jim, do I look sick? She didn't, she looked beautiful. And then six months later, and it was an agonizing six months, mm -hmm. she passed away on the 19th of December. The last nine days were very difficult because the three kids I have, and I stayed in the room in the hospital with her. And she was a bit of a martyr, you know, she was very good with the kids. And uh, then she passed away, and I couldn't handle it. I couldn't believe it, and I didn't want to accept it. Oh, for about three months I was, and a funny thing happened, Paul. My friends and even some family members, because I was always a strong person, decided that they should let me grieve alone. And then it got too long, and I think they were embarrassed. So that was hard to take. Nobody came to visit me, see? You know, like these friends. Uh, they were my friends for 38 years. But it was just the way things happened. What had you imagined the rest of your life was going to be like? Had you planned a long retirement? Oh, yeah. And uh, because I've had a total altogether of 83 operations and my body, that I assumed, I guess, I would go first. Mm. And then Margaret, so we kind of geared everything towards that, you know, financially, plans and everything. But I bike fire. And these are the things that were going through my head. And, and even although I've got the neighbors have become good friends, and I have good friends, and I've got two that I see almost daily, I still miss her. Of course. I still miss her. 